Welcome to Hearing God's Voice. In today's message, The Great Reconciliation, we discover how Jacob stopped running from his problems and learned to see the face of God in his brother. The central message of the Bible is the story of how God reached down in love to restore the sea of fallen humanity to himself. God knows that when our relationship with him is restored, our relationships with others is greatly improved. The Bible is filled with stories of how people with broken relationships have been restored to one another through the power of God. None of these are more powerful than the story of how God restored the broken relationship between Jacob and Esau. Previously, we learned that while Jacob was running from the last set of problems that he created, he had a dramatic encounter with the Lord through a dream. In his dream, he saw a ladder reaching down from heaven with angels ascending and descending on these stairs. It was a turning point in Jacob's life and the first step he took towards living in a way that was honoring to the Lord. There were still many more lessons that Jacob needed to learn, but he was on the right path. And it's a beautiful thing to get on the right path following our God. Jacob spent the next 20 years reaping some of the tricks that he had played on others in his relationship with his uncle Laban. He worked for seven years to marry Rachel, Laban's second daughter, and when the time came for Laban's daughter to be unveiled, Jacob, to his horror, discovered he'd just been married to Leah, <laughs> Laban's firstborn, uh, Rachel, Rachel's older sister. And so Laban had tricked Jacob into working for another seven years to win the lady of his love and her hand in marriage. And so for 20 years, Jacob had an uncomfortable relationship with his uncle, Yet God kept him in spite of all that he was called upon to endure. His experience in Padan Aram demonstrates that even when others treat us poorly, God can still bless us greatly. And whatever circumstances you are in, God wants to bless you in spite of what others are trying to do to you. Now Jacob began to feel more and more uncomfortable in the shift that he felt in his relationship with his uncle and the sons. But this time, he did not run. Instead, he waited on the Lord. The Bible said, the Lord said to Jacob, return to the land of your fathers and to your relatives, and I will be with you. Genesis chapter 31 and verse 3. So he took his wives and the children and all the livestock that he had acquired and set out on the long journey back to his parents' home. I invite you to read about the events recorded in Genesis chapters 29 through 31 about Jacob's time in Padan Aram. If you are facing difficult circumstances, I encourage you to ask the Lord for a solution. Ask God. If it's time for you to make a move from where you are or whether he wants you to stay there just a little bit longer. As Jacob went on his way, he had another encounter with angels. What a blessed man. I don't know if you've had an a encounter with an angel, but to have multiple encounters with angels ex certainly is extraordinary. He was visited by angels coming and going. We release to you revelations of angels to help you on the path that God has for you to follow. <clears throat> As Jacob went on his way, we read, angels of God met him. And when Jacob saw them, he said, this is God's camp. And so he called the name of this place Mahamin, Genesis chapter 32, verses 1 and 2. As Jacob traveled, he had time to reflect on all that God had done for him since his divine encounter at Bethel. Remember, Bethel is house, house of God. El is God, Elohim, Beth El. So Jacob said to God, I am unworthy of all the loving kindness and all the faithfulness which you have shown to your servant. 
For with my staff only I crossed this Jordan, and now I have become two companies. Genesis chapter 32 and verse 10. Now, I remember when I came to America in the early 70s with nothing but a small suitcase of clothes. I was 19 years old. I had been now, I've been married for 48 years, five married children, 14 grandchildren. Certainly, God has blessed me. He's been good to me. People in this room testifying my parents were still in Africa back in those days. And many in this room come to know you over the years, have similar stories. You came to America from Africa, some kind of scholarship. Now you're educated, you have good jobs, some are married, some have children, some have even found their way to become American citizens. We welcome you. We're so glad that you have a testimony of what God has done for you. (laughs) Isn't it nice to receive the applause of the audience if you are from Africa? We welcome you so warmly. Now, as Jacob continued, he came to the Jabbok River in the mountains of Gilead. Uh, Gilead uh, is a delightful place to rest and to be restored. And I've had the joy of visiting this river and seeing the surroundings and imagining the story as it unfolded. For me, it was peaceful. But for Jacob, he found neither rest nor peace at the Jabbok because his past was about to catch up with him about. If you ever had an experience where your past caught up with you, you can know how frightening that can be. He knew that the next day he was going to meet his brother for the first time since he cheated him over 20 years ago. Some people have a long memory, and I'm sure the devil was playing with his mind. The Bible tells us that Jacob sent his wives and the possessions that he had ahead of him. And that night, he was alone and he was afraid. We read in Genesis, Jacob felt alone. And a man wrestled with him until the breaking of the day. What an interesting statement that is. Genesis chapter 32 and verse 24. And God begins to deal with the issues in our lives that need to change. Often, he isolates us to get our attention. He takes away from us the things that are preventing us from giving him our full attention so that he can talk to us and encourage us. It can be a frightening thing to be alone with God. But many have testified that being alone with God brought about the most important change in their life that is needed You've had an experience of wrestling with God and came away from it stronger because of God reaching you and touching you. We read that Jacob wrestled all night. There was no rest for the weary that night. As Jacob wrestled with this man, he discovered that he was actually wrestling with God. Isn't that an extraordinary statement? And perhaps you're in a battle. And you may actually be fighting against God's will and plan for your life. When Jacob realized the man who has, he was fighting with who he was, he stopped fighting and clung onto that man as tightly as he could, begged that man to bless him. I invite you to get alone with God and ask him to bless you. And before God leaves Jacob, He does two very important things for him. He changes his name from Jacob to Israel, and he permanently dislocated his hip, another fascinating text of Scripture. Jacob's running days were finally over. Perhaps you've been running from God, and today an invitation is being extended to you to stop running from God. The Bible tells us that Jacob wrestled with God all night, and this is what we read happened in the morning. Jacob named that place Penuel, for he said, I have seen God face to face, and yet my life has been preserved. Genesis chapter 32 and verse 30. I assure you that if there was any other way God could stop Jacob from running, he would have not needed to dislocate his thigh. We read in Genesis chapter 32 and verse 
31, now the sun rose upon him just as he crossed over Penuel. Remember, this is the Jabbok River that he has named the place of God. And he was limping in his thigh. He had a limp, and that limp stayed with him for the rest of his life. It was a reminder that God touched him and took the run out of him. And there's some run in you and me that God wants to take out of us. Genesis chapter 32 and verse 31. Jacob crossed the Jabbok slowly, limping towards his brother, who was galloping towards him with 400 mounted horsemen. The time had come for Jacob to stand still and let God do what only God can do. There is a time in our life when we just have to stand. We've exhausted our human ingenuity, human thinking, and human thoughts. That's when God does his best work. Listen to what the Lord did for Jacob and for Esau. Then Esau ran to meet him and embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed him, and they wept together. Genesis chapter 33 and verse 4. And when somebody who knows the worst about you greets you with tears of joy, you know that it's God who has done that. No one could have ever imagined how God helped these two brothers to reconcile. Jacob presented to his brother a huge gift of goats and rams and sheep and camels and cows and donkeys. You can read about it in Genesis 33. But this is what Esau said. I have plenty, my brother. Let what you have be your own. Genesis chapter 33 and verse 9. Then Jacob said these words to Esau, remarkable. No, but please, if I have found favor in your sight, then accept my present from my hand, for I have seen your face, which is like seeing the face of God, and you have accepted me. What remarkable words. Genesis chapter 33 And verse 10, when we see the face of God in people, something has changed. Only God can help people who are bitter enemies see the face of God in each other's faces. Jacob knew what God's face looked like because he had just seen him the night before as he wrestled. If you are struggling with hard feelings towards someone, I invite you to ask God to do for you what he did for these brothers. First, ask God to show himself to you, and then ask God to show his face to you in the one that you think is your enemy. Now, the last time I visited Jabbok, I was with a mix of people from very many different backgrounds. I shared with them the story of this great reconciliation that took place just near this river. And as you look at this gentle flowing river, ask God to show you the face of someone who has hurt you. Then ask God to show you in his face the face of the one that you are thinking of. Ask God to show you his face in the person who you think might be your enemy. What a beautiful thing it is to make direct eye contact with one another and say these words, I see in your face the face of God. I've had the privilege around the world working with groups from different ethnicities and different backgrounds who are struggling to come together and to truly love and respect one another, to simply make eye contact and say these words to each other. I see in your face the face of God. If you are at odds with someone, I pray that God will use this message to bring about a great reconciliation for you. Well, how do I know uh, that this, uh, who who it was that Jacob saw? Uh, As you read that text and read it over and over again, what we find out was this was an Old Testament appearance of Jesus himself. Perhaps as you have been running, 
you have realized, as you've heard this message, you have realized that you have been running from God. And today I want to invite you to be reconciled with God. Ask God to open your eyes to see that the one with whom Jacob wrestled was actually an Old Testament appearance of Jesus. And ask Jesus to open your eyes to see what Jesus did for you on the cross. Ask Jesus to forgive you for all the sins that you have committed. Ask Jesus to give you the gift of his eternal life and fill you with his Holy Spirit. Let us pray together. Father, thank you for bringing about this great reconciliation today by the power of your Holy Spirit. Heal deep wounds and grudges that people are carrying today. Help us to see your face in the people that we meet every day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk to someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as a dollar a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations for Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.